Today we celebrate the feast of our Lord's baptism. We may think to ourselves, why are we celebrating the feast of our Lord's baptism? When you look back to last Sunday, we celebrate the epiphany of our Lord. The wise men seeing our Lord and giving gifts. He was manifest as Lord to the nations. These wise men came from different parts of the world to acknowledge our Lord as King of the world, King of the universe. Yeah, yeah. So and before that, we see that God manifests himself as a baby. <coughs> So these word epiphany mean manifest. We see how God manifests himself as an infant, and we celebrate his birth, and then we see his manifest as an infant that being adored by other nations, and now we see him being manifested to the Israelites as the eternal son of God. Before all the Israelites, he is recognized by the voice of the Father. Behold my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Yes. And the dove of the Holy Spirit descended upon him. We see in the world, in our situation now, a manifest of, of violence, of, of destruction. And we've seen this gone on even in the past. A lot of violence and destruction and carnage going on around our country. And so we've been praying for peace, praying for peace for our nation, praying for peace in the hearts of those who, uh, who have taken up that, um, that violence and destruction. But we know the peace that's beyond all understanding comes from Christ alone. Yes. 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 And so I offered and invited my brothers and sisters of Christ um, a few weeks ago to make that consecration to Jesus through Mary. And I feel so blessed to be on that journey where so many of you have um, logged on uh, or um, listened through the, um, or, or dialed on the phone to be able to make that consecration. Yeah. So we went together as brothers and sisters of Christ. That was a means, an opportunity to renew our baptismal promises. And so it's providential that brothers and sisters of Christ, those who, who were involved in that retreat, made their consecration yesterday. They made it uh, within Mass, and some made it within uh, the Rosary in the evening. And so many people were saying that they found a new way of accounting Christ. Yes. And they said to me that they experienced so much joy in doing this consecration. It was the work of the Holy Spirit in their life. Yes. It was something that God was doing for them, in yes. them, and through them. And that emptying of self, yes. you know, we hear St. John the Baptist say, all the people were coming to him, and they thought that he was the Messiah. They were ready to worship him. They were ready to worship a mere man, who was holy but a man, who was not God, who was not the Messiah. They were ready, at his word, and he said, no. He said, I am not even worthy to unloose the sandals of our Lord. I am not even worthy to do that menial task that slaves would do for someone who would come into their home. You know, they would walk around in ancient Israel. Um, their, their feet would be covered in mud and, and manure and everything else. And they would come in and someone else would unloose their sandals and, and, and wash their sandals. And St. John the Baptist realized that Jesus is Lord. Yes. And he wasn't even worthy to do that task. He showed his reverence. We may think to ourselves that maybe reverence is a way of distancing ourselves from God. Maybe it's a way that becomes formality. But we see that reverence is an expression of faith. Yes. And it doesn't separate us from love. Now just imagine a soldier who is in war, and he has a photograph of his wife and his children. When he looks at that photograph, he doesn't treat it like a newspaper or something that's not important. He treasures that. He reverence that photograph because he reverence his love for his wife and his children. You know, we see that reverence and love are not separate. They're one. Yes. 
You know, when we heard the gospel being proclaimed, we all stood. You know, we stood because Christ, who is being manifest through the word of God, is being proclaimed. Yes. Whenever the gospel is being spoken, Jesus is present. And we stand to show our reverence, our expression of faith, that the Lord is present. We acknowledge Jesus as Lord in so many ways. And, you know, when you saw Deacon kiss the gospel, he's kissing the gospel so that reverence, again, because of Christ's presence, yeah. you know, as an expression of faith. When you came into church, you kneeled, you genuflect before you enter into your pew to acknowledge Jesus' real presence yeah. in the most holy Eucharist. These are different ways we express Jesus as Lord. Lord of heaven, Lord of earth, Lord of our hearts. So many ways we acknowledge him as he is. He has that sovereignty over us. And if we acknowledge him as Lord on earth, do you think that he's going to deny us as his disciples, as his beloved children, when we see that last hour, we pass from this life to the next he is faithful. So yeah, we acknowledge yeah. him as Lord, and he acknowledges us as his beloved. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember when I was in the, in the Holy Land, and it was a special grace. I never, I always, always my dream to go to the Holy Land. And I remember, you know, going to the Holy Land, and when I looked at the Jordan River, it looked so small. I mean, it didn't look like a river at all, to be honest. It's, I thought, like, wow, this is, it's so small. And it, it, it looked, you know, filled with, with dust and soil. You couldn't really see through it. And I'm sure that the river, when our Lord was, was present, that it had to be, it must have shrunk. I'm, I'm sure it, it shrunk. <laughs> I've heard other scholars, you know, talk about how it, it, it did, you know, it has shrunk. But... Nevertheless, like um, when I went to the Jordan River, I took bottles of the Jordan River. And um, I took bottles of the Jordan River. And our guide, who was a, um, it was a priest, it was a neo catechumenate priest, and he said, this is the only river, this is the only water that no pope, no bishop, no priest will bless. Because the Lord himself walked in these waters. I took all these bottles, empty bottles, and I, and I, I took all the, the, the Jordan River, and um, I, I wanted to bring it back to um, my first, you know, church family, Nativity of Our Lord in Warminster. I gave a presentation, and I want to give a presentation, I still have the photographs about my experience in the Holy Lands, and I definitely want to do that here to share you uh, a, a bit of my experience in that journey, um, going to everywhere that our Lord himself was actually present. It was powerful. Yeah. I, you know, I highly recommend if you ever have an opportunity to go to the Holy Land, it would change your life. Because when you go there, it, it brings to life. You know, what we read in a gospel, we, we, we read about it, we imagine it so many times, you know, through our meditation, our prayers. But when you're there, when you're actually there, where Jesus walked, Come on. Um, it's amazing. So when I went there, uh, the priest, it was, it was a pilgrimage with other priests, we renewed our baptismal promises. And, um, and we were blessed with the, the Jordan River. You know, of course, we can never, ever be baptized twice, right? That's part of what we believe as Catholics, as Christians. But we renewed our baptismal promises there. And... We, uh, we, one priest kind of poured the Jordan River over us. And I brought the holy water in, in, the, in the bottle, and I used that to bless everyone's rosaries and sacramentals, um, to have that blessing of that holy water that was blessed by Christ himself. You know, but when we think about us, you know, we are truly blessed to yes. be baptized. Yes. It was in a, our baptism that even though we're not physically present at the Jordan River, Christ he can work outside of time and space. And so he becomes present at our baptism. And we ourselves put on Christ. And when the holy water was, was poured over us in the name of the Father, 
and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we became a new creation. And at that moment, even though we can't see with our physical eyes, at that moment, this is what actually happens. God the Father, he looks down into our soul and he says, Behold my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Because Jesus is present in our soul. At that moment, our sin of original sin is wiped away, and we are a new creation. I love celebrating baptism. Uh, either as an infant or as an adult, I love celebrating baptism. Because once that baptism takes place, you know, that child or that adult receive all the graces to be conformed to Christ. Come on. And they are made holy, perfectly holy. All personal sin, all original sin is cleansed. And so we show that reverence every time to remember our baptism. How do we remember our baptism? I'm sure if you ever gone to a funeral mass, you would see the priest use holy water and sprinkle the holy water upon the casket or the urn. Why sprinkle the holy water? The holy water reminds us of the grace of baptism. Come on. It goes right back to the beginning. So when you see the holy water sprinkled on the casket, it's to remember the sacramental grace to receive at baptism, that they're consecrated to the Lord. And when you look at this huge candle, it's called the Paschal candle. And the Paschal candle is always present at, uh, at every funeral. And the Paschal is present also during the season of Easter and, and even at Christmas. We light the Paschal candle. That Paschal candle was lit at our baptism. That light was, uh, they would have a baptismal candle and the godparents would take their candle and they would light it from the Paschal candle. It, it signifies the light of Christ. You know, that Paschal candle was blessed at Easter Vigil. And so that blessed cast, Paschal candle represents Christ. And it points right back to our sacramental baptism. So the Lord reveals to us that he went into the Jordan River, not to be cleansed, but to cleanse us, to cleanse the waters of sin, to make it holy, to do what? To give us freedom. Yeah. We experience a greater freedom to not fall into violence or carnage, but a freedom to love God, yeah. a, pre a freedom yeah. to reject yeah. sin, <laughs> a freedom to be one with Christ. You know, hate, anger, resentment, jealousy, those enslave us to sin. They enslave us to the spirit of the world. Come on. You know, to love money or wealth, to be attached to that, it enslaves us to the world. If we're holding on to the world and the Lord is calling us to leave the world, we can't do both Come at on. the same time. Baptism gave us a freedom to be one with Christ in order to pick up our cross and to use it as a shield, to use it as a sign, to use it as a way to help us to be conformed to Christ. And so God gives us the cross. You know, so many of, of our brothers and sisters in Christ are at home right now. And we know that they're unable to come to, to Mass here. We see so many people suffering from financial loss and and distress and not knowing how they're going to make it. We see so many experience the cross, but we realize that God gives us the cross, but he gives us the grace to carry that cross. And so we have the freedom to not live in fear. Christ is still reigning as king in heaven. Yes. And he still is watching over us. He is still king of mercy. And he gives the freedom to realize that he is in control of our destiny. He is control of our country and of our world. Yeah. And so we rejoice in Christ. We rejoice and bear witness to Christ. In the second reading, we heard St. John said, the water bear witness to Christ. Blood bear witness to Christ. God the Father himself bear witness to Christ. The Holy Spirit descending as a dove bear witness to Christ. We ourselves have the freedom <coughs> to call Jesus Lord. And that is a witness that encourages us, it strengthens us. 
and nourish us with the milk and water we heard in the first reading that we hunger and thirst for. We hunger and thirst for the milk and the water of God's grace. Yeah. God's grace is always poured out into our soul, not only in baptism and confirmation and the whole Eucharist, but every time we receive a cross, the Father bears witness to his Son in us, and he pours into our soul every grace we need to bear witness to his Son. And that bearing witness strengthens us. You know, when we look at freedom, sometimes people confuse it with license. Come on. And what is license? License means to say, I do what I want when I want. So if someone says, hey, I don't like this person, I don't like what they're saying, I'm going to go and do harm to that person. I, I freely going to do that. That's license. To do whatever you want, whenever you want, is not freedom. It's license. And we never want to confuse freedom with license. Come on. We always obey God's law. Yeah. And in doing God's law, we experience freedom. And that freedom is to be able to bear witness to Christ. And what is what God's commandment gives us? It gives us the freedom to love God and each other. Yes. And that's what brings union rather than division. So we as disciples of Christ, we renew our honoring of Jesus' baptism in the Jordan. Let us think about our own baptism. Let us call to mind the, the promise we made, the vows we made at baptism. Either our parents did or we ourselves. When we look at that, we should turn to Our Lady to help us to be faithful. Because she is here as a loving mother, always helping us to be able to surrender to God's will. She helps us to carry our cross. You know, it's so hard to carry our cross alone. Why not do it with the help of our Blessed Mother and the help of St. Joseph? Come on. That's their role, to help us carry our cross. Because there's times where we just want to lay it down and we don't want to pick it up. We just want to give up. We're tempted to do that. And in those times, we need extra graces. Come on. And Our Lady and St. Joseph are right there to help us, to rejoice in the freedom of God's grace. So let us turn to Our Lady, to St. Joseph, to help us rejoice in our baptism, the greatest gift that God has given us, truly in our baptism, and to take up that freedom, to bear witness to Christ, to bring healing upon our church and our world. Amen. Amen. Amen.